Good evening to one and all. Today we will be dealing with the chapter photosynthesis and today we will be learning how the presence of potassium ion can control the opening and closing of stomata. Apart from that we will also learn how light reaction and dark reaction of photosynthesis going on in the plant can produce the glucose. So let us start the today's proceedings with the note that we have to understand the concept first. So that's the reason why I have made a flowchart kind of thing over here so that you can understand the concept first. First one, potassium ion exchange theory during light means when there is a daylight that time how the potassium ion exchange theory will work to open the stomata. So let us go through. So first of all, the starch, starch present in the leaves of the plant. I repeat the starch present in the leaves of the plant will convert into malic acid. The extra starch present in the leaves of the plant will convert into malic acid. This malic acid is a very unstable acid. It is a very unstable acid. So what will happen? Malic acid will break into malate and H plus ions. Malate ion and H plus ion. So two types of ion will be forming malate ions and H plus ion. What happens? Extra starch converted into malic acid, malic acid broken into malate and H plus ion. Now this malate and H plus ion will have an exchange. Extra deposition of H plus ion will go to the epidermal cells of the plant. Extra deposition of H plus ion will go to the epidermal cells of the plant and from the epidermal cells of the plant the potassium ion will be entering the guard cells. I repeat extra deposition of the H plus ion will go to the epidermal cells of the plant and the potassium ion from the nearby cells will enter the guard cells along with the presence of the mallet ion. Now in the guard cells mallet ion is also present which is an anion and that K plus ion is also present potassium ion which is an cation. So this mallet ion will compensate the effect of the K plus ion that is the cation. Now what happens, I know, I hope you can understand what is anion and cation. Anion means negatively charged, cation means positively charged. So what happens, this, there will be an exchange between the exchange between hydrogen and K plus. The hydrogen form in the guard cells will go out and it will enter the epiderm, epidermal cells of the leaf. But the potassium ions from the various source will go inside the guard cells along with the presence of the mallet ion. And now what happens? Once the K plus ion has entered, once the K plus ion has entered the guard cells along with the presence of the mallet ion in the guard cells only, there will be of involvement of one more ion that is the Cl minus ion. Means now in the guard cells there is K plus ion as well as mallet ion as well as the Cl minus ions. Now since the minus group ion that is the anion that is the mallet ion and the chlorine their population is more their means their source is more in the guard cell as compared to that of the k plus ion so more and more k plus ion will enter now i hope you can understand what i have said since the anion that is the cl minus ion and the mallet ion is more in the guard cell it will withdraw more and more k plus ion from the nearby cells and the guard cell will have more k plus ion so as to compensate the effect of cation and anion. There should not be more anion or there should not be very much cation also. Neither there should be more K plus ion nor there should be more uh, mallet ion or Cl minus ions. So what happens since the presence of mallet ion as well as since the presence of the mallet ion and the Cl minus ion is more in the guard cell. So now what will happen? More and more K plus ion from the nearby cells will be gathered into the guard cells. Now if K plus ion concentration increased, now increased concentration of K plus ion since more and more is entering. So slightly the concentration of in K plus ion is increasing slightly not much only slight increase increment in the concentration of the K plus ion. Now when the concentration of the K plus ion increased slightly, what will happen? The osmotic concentration will be fluctuating. Because K plus ion has slightly increased concentration because of the heavy inflow of the K plus ion from the nearby cell to the guard cell. Now what happens? There is a slight fluctuation in the concent osmotic concentration that will allow more and more water to flow in the guard cell. 
Now when more and more water flow in the guard cell, guard cell become turgid, stomata open. Guard cell become turgid and the stomata opens. That is what the concept behind the potassium ion exchange theory. Last class we have learned about that starch sugar interconversion theory. And now today we have learned about potassium ion exchange theory. So last time we learned how the sugar starch interconversion theory can regulate the opening of stomata. Today we have learned about potassium ion exchange theory to how that how the potassium ion exchange can regulate the opening of the stomata or how it is controlling the opening and closing of stomata. So I hope you can understand this one. After that, we will learn about light reaction but before going to the light reaction one note you maintain it so here osmotic concentration fluctuates since the osmotic concentration fluctuates more and more water will be withdrawn since there is a high osmotic concentration to compensate it more and more water will be withdrawn from the nearby cells and the guard cell will become turgid guard cell opens but what happens at night this is during the light during the daytime at night what happens at night the things will go on changing. Why? Because there is no extra deposition of starch. Because there is no extra deposition of starch, no any formation of malic acid, no formation of malate or hydrogen ions, no changing of osmotic concentration, the guard cell will remain flaccid and as a, as a reason, what will happen? That since the guard cell is flaccid, the stomata will fail to open at night. That's the reason why the stomata remains closed during the night time and opens during the daytime. So this K plus ion concentration theory or the K plus ion concentration or exchange theory, whatever you can say, this theory is the modern one and the old one was the starch sugar interconversion theory. So I hope you can understand it here. Next. Next is about the light reaction and dark reaction. What happens during light reaction of photosynthesis and what happens during dark reaction of photosynthesis but before that one more thing what are the requirements of photosynthesis first of all water if there is no proper water then no opening of stomata why because water only makes the guard cell turgid which will allow the stomata to open the transpiration to happen and while the transpiration the photosynthesis will also occur because through stomata the carbon dioxide can diffuse in so water is the first requirement then comes the sunlight the most Colorful light which the chloroplast can absorb is the red and the blue spectrum of light. The red and the blue and green also slightly it is accepting but mostly it is red and blue only it is accepting. Blue, red and blue regions of the spectrum of the light is absorbed by the leaf so that the process of photosynthesis can continue. Apart from that, what other things are required? Some minerals like nitrogen, iron, phosphorus, Potassium, these all things are required apart from the water and sunlight to the to make the process of photosynthesis a very successful one. Now, next is one very much important topic that is the compensation point. Compensation point. What is compensation point? During the time of dawn, DAW and dawn, early morning and dusk, that is the early evening means the time when the uh, sunlight is going and the night is about to come that time during the time of dawn and during the time of dusk means early morning and the early evening at that time the light intensity is quite same so the amount of respiration and amount of photosynthesis is same means the plant is absorbing the same amount of carbon dioxide and liberating the same amount of oxygen plant is absorbing the same amount of carbon dioxide and liberating the same amount of oxygen means respiration and photosynthesis due to the intensity of light maintains a same graph neither the photosynthesis is more nor the respiration is less or not the respiration is more or not the photosynthesis photosynthesis is less they are maintaining a same graph that graph is called that point is called as comp compensation point where the photosynthesis and respiration is taking place at the same rate due to the proper intensity of light. Now, with this note, we will start about light reaction. So, first of all, light reaction is taking place in the grana. First point in the light reaction is that photolysis. In photolysis, what happens? In photolysis or photolysis, the H2O molecules, the unit present in the ray of light is known as photons. 
P-H-O-T-O-N-S, photons. These photons, which is present in the ray of light, will break the water into hydrogen, electron and oxygen. Oxygen formed will be disappeared or dissipated in the atmosphere. There is no requirement of the oxygen. But the hydrogen and electron what forms will help in the next step. That is, next step is after the breaking of the water molecule into hydrogen, electron and oxygen, oxygen dissipated or disappeared in the atmosphere. Now, the adenosine diphosphate, adenosine diphosphate is a small amount of energy. Adenosine diphosphate is a small amount of energy. When it com comes in contact with PI, PI means inorganic phosphate. PI means inorganic phosphate. When it comes in contact with PI, with the help of energy, it is converting into ATP, that is adenosine triphosphate. Diphosphate with the presence of PI and energy, inorganic phosphate and energy, converting into ATP. And since this process is taking place under the sunlight, that's why it is called as photophosphorylation. Phospho means adding of one phosphate group and photo means light. So photophosphorylation is happening under the, under, the, under the presence of light, the ADP is converting to ATP with the help of PI and extra energy. Now, next is the NADP plus nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Full form is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate in the presence of electron and hydrogen converts into nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate hydrogen also we can say. We can also say nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide biphosphate. Either we can say nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate hydrogen or we can say nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide biphosphate. So this NADP which is already present in the plant is reduced to form NADPH and liberating one hydrogen, liberating one H plus ion. Now this is what happens in the, the light reaction. So the NADP converts into NADPH, ADP converts into ATP. The utilization of this ATP and NADPH will occur in the dark reaction. The using of these two important molecules formed by the light reaction will be used up in the dark reaction. Let us see what happens in the dark reaction. Dark reaction means it will not take place in the night. Many of the students confused that dark reaction means only at night only it will take place. No, dark reaction means light independent reaction. Whether there is light, whether the light is present or not, that reaction will continue. So, so dark reaction phase is taking place in the stroma. Here what happens? RUBP. RUBP means ribulose biphosphate. This ribulose biphosphate comes in contact with the CO2, comes in contact with the carbon dioxide CO2 and with the presence of enzyme known as rubisco. That is ribulose biphosphate carboxylase. Ribulose biphosphate carboxylase means ribulose biphosphate plus CO2 in the presence of the enzyme ribulose biphosphate carboxylase forms a compound known as phosphoglyceric acid. Phosphoglyceric acid. Now, this phosphoglyceric acid is formed when, when this RUBP is in coming in contact with the CO2 in the presence of the enzyme Rubisco it is forming 2-PGA that is phosphoglyceric acid. This phosphoglyceric acid is reduced by NADPH2. The NADPH we have formed along with one hydrogen ion here. This NADPH2 is reducing the PGA in the presence of energy ATP. Means NADPH2 requires ATP to reduce PAG. PGA. PGA. PGA means phosphoglyceric acid. Now this phosphoglyceric acid is changed into glyceraldehyde phosphate. GAP means glyceraldehyde phosphate. So phosphoglyceric acid changes into GAP that is glyceraldehyde phosphate and along with that it forms NADP, ADP and PI means inorganic phosphate. Now this small part of GAP that is glyceraldehyde phosphate will be converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate. The smaller part of glyceraldehyde phosphate is now converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate. 
Now, this dihydroxyacetone phosphate along with GAP will form glucose. Will form glucose that is C6H12O6. So, glyceraldehyde phosphate along with dihydroxyacetone phosphate, this means small part of GAP, glyceraldehyde phosphate is converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and now dihydroxyacetone phosphate along with the remaining part of GAP, glyceraldehyde phosphate converted to glucose. This is what happens. Now, in the last phase of dark reaction, we can see small part of GAP converted into dihydroxyacetone dihydroxyacetone phosphate and this they both combine and condenses to form glucose now what happens to this NADP this NADP will again be reduced to form NADPH and utilized in the dark reaction what happens to this ADP and PI this ADP and PI will converted again to ATP adenosine triphosphate in the presence of light then what will happen to this RUBP ribulose biphosphate the RUBP ribulose biphosphate will again be regenerated by the help of the enzyme Rubisco so that the next step of the dark reaction means in the next round of dark reaction can be continued so that the glucose can be formed again. That is what. Now, what are the product of photosynthesis? First of all, glucose. Glucose. If the glucose is formed, now in the process of photosynthesis, glucose is formed. If the plant requires glucose, that part of glucose will be instantly used and remaining part will be converted into starch. How? By the process of polymerization. Now what is starch? Many molecules, many molecules of glucose will combine to form the starch that is known as polymerization. When small, small molecule, let's say you are making a necklace of pearls, what you will do? You will take many pearls and it, you will just group it together in a thread or group it together in a chain or made out of gold or silver and you will make the necklace. That is known as polymerization. So here many molecules of glucose will combine to form starch that is known as polymerization. Now glucose which is, glucose which is required by the plant at that instant will be utilized soon. Glucose which is requir not required by the plant in that instant will be kept aside as starch. Water is formed in this process. That water will be used for the next process of photosynthesis as well as for the transpiration. Now, water, we understood that what happens with the water, either it will be used for the process of photosynthesis or transpiration. Glucose will be meeting the energy requirement of the plant. If not required, then it will convert it into starch and stored in the plant. Now, last one is oxygen. What happens to the oxygen? The oxygen will disappear in the atmosphere and it is helping the zoological part to breathe. I hope you can understand this over here. Now, one more point I would like to mention in potassium ion exchange theory is that when the exchange between hydrogen and the K plus ion is taking place, as well as Cl minus ion is also moving to the guard cells, that time it is not a passive process. It's an active process. It requires the expense of ATP. If ATP is not there properly, then this K plus ion concentration theory or K plus ion potassium ion exchange theory will not take place because exchange of ion is requiring the energy. And if energy is not present in a proper amount, then that process won't be feasible. That process won't be taking place. And who is producing the energy? Chloroplast is producing the energy for this process to happen. So I hope you can understand through this video. If any doubts, you can ask. Thanks a lot.